So, there's a spooky feeding habit that caterpillars in Hawaii have been showing off. These inchworms, called geometrid larvae, are going against the norm and skipping the whole eating leaves thing. Instead, they hang out on leaves and stems, waiting for insects to come by so they can quickly snatch them up with their spiny legs. Ow! Scientists have found a bunch of these little bug hunters in Hawaii's forests and have been raising them in the lab. Turns out, they belong to a group of caterpillars called Eupithecia, which normally chow down on plant stuff like flowers and leaves. But in Hawaii, around six of these Eupithecia species have decided to go carnivorous, opting for a diet of insect snacks instead. Maybe all that protein-rich flower pollen they've been eating has helped them unlock their inner predator. Due to the lack of predator from the mainland, these grappling inchworms have been able to thrive in Hawaii's ecosystem, unlike other invasive species causing trouble for native plants and animals. These flesh-eating caterpillars in Hawaii have evolved to occupy the ecological niche typically filled by insects, like praying mantises in other regions. They're known for their quick attacks, taking only about 0.1 second to strike and devour their live prey. Hopefully, they don't get any bigger and hungrier. Rattlesnakes use their iconic rattle to warn predators like coyotes and bison to stay away or risk getting bitten. This rattling behavior evolved from ancestral tail shaking as a form of opossumatic signaling. Rather than using the rattle to attract mates, the sound serves as a warning signal of the danger posed by the snake's venomous fangs. Hey, thanks for the warning! The rattling noise is created by loosely attached, hollow segments of dead skin at the end of the snake's tail that click together. Recent research has shown that rattlesnakes adjust the speed of their rattling based on the proximity of a predator, creating a clever auditory illusion to deter potential threats. This sophisticated use of sound helps rattlesnakes defend themselves despite their own inability to hear the rattle. Now, scallops have a unique appearance, resembling horror movie clams with tendrils and eyes inside their mouths. Despite, you know, being delicious. Scientists have discovered that these eyes, which look like berries, could be compared to advanced telescopes. They're like tiled mirrors, capable of creating complex images similar to those formed by modern observatory telescopes. Interestingly, scallops do not have a brain, yet their eyes can form blurry images of objects. Unlike other mollusks, such as mussels, scallops have a unique eye structure similar to insects. This may explain why scallops are among the few bivalves that can swim. The numerous eyes on a scallop may help in creating a 3D view of its surroundings, with some eyes having better vision than others. These unique eyes could potentially influence the design of future telescopes inspiring the creation of compact, wide-field imaging devices. So, the next time you enjoy a scallop dish, mm, remember that these creatures have up to 200 tiny telescopes looking back at you. What is the purpose of hollow bones in birds? Well, birds possess unique skeletal adaptations crucial for being able to fly. One of these is hollow bones. Also known as pneumocized bones, they contain air spaces that aid in oxygen intake during flight. Air sacs are connected to these hollow areas within a bird's bones, allowing their lungs to extend throughout their skeletal structure. This intricate system helps birds absorb oxygen while breathing in and out, ultimately increasing oxygen levels in their blood and providing them with the necessary energy for flying. So, contrary to popular belief, Hollow bones do not necessarily make a bird lighter. Studies show that bird bones are actually heavier compared to those animals of a similar size. In fact, the skeleton of a 2-ounce bird is denser and heavier than that of a 2-ounce mouse. This increased density results in stiffer and stronger thin hollow bones that are less likely to break. Sometimes, legs are a lie. Ooh, tell me more! In a recent study, researchers delved into how caterpillars grow their signature chubby legs. They actually serve an important purpose. Caterpillars need to eat a lot to grow quickly, so having chubby legs help them move around leaves and stems efficiently. 
Interestingly, these chubby legs aren't actually legs at all. They're called prolegs, short nubs that help caterpillars move. The caterpillar's real legs, which turn into its adult legs as a moth or a butterfly, are near its head and are not used for walking. Even if a caterpillar loses its real legs, it can still move using its fake ones. This raises the question of what makes a leg a leg. Is it about its structure or its function? Caterpillars' unique legs are just one example of the fascinating adaptation seen in arthropods. These temporary legs help caterpillars feed and move before they transform into their final form. This fleeting glimpse into the caterpillar's world reminds us of the transitory nature of life and encourages us to appreciate these special legs while they last. These bearded dragons are cool lizards from Australia that hang out in deserts, savannas, scrublands, and subtropical forests. They're known for being real chill pets thanks to their friendly vibes, constant smile, and laid-back attitude. People love keeping them as pets, calling them beardies because of the spiky stuff on their necks. There are eight kinds of bearded dragons, with lots of different colors and patterns developed in captivity. Even though they're doing well in their Australian homes, some of these dragons have ended up in other parts of the world through sneaky means. Though they mostly stick to the ground in the wild, they can sure climb trees when they need to show off or escape from something real spooky. Bearded dragons are now all over the world, except Hawaii, because they're not allowed there. Fun fact, these dragons can regrow teeth, just like sharks and geckos. Some bearded dragons have been seen slurping up rainwater when it's super hot and dry outside. Bearded dragons have some quirky sleeping habits, snoozing in weird positions even when they're in their comfy tanks. They can literally stand while sleeping. They can also run pretty fast, as fast as humans. Still, they prefer taking it easy most of the time. When they do need to make a dash, they can stand up on two legs and zoom like a human. Mother Nature does not always adhere to strict definitions of gender. Some species have the ability to develop and maintain both male and female reproductive organs simultaneously. That's a trick. Others have the capability to switch from one gender to another, depending on various factors such as environmental conditions. These changes can provide reproductive flexibility, or may be triggered by external factors such as rising global temperatures. Clownfish are an example of sequential hermaphrodites, born as one gender but able to transition to the opposite gender if needed. In the case of clownfish, this transformation occurs from male to female, a process known as protantric. In a group of clownfish, only two members are fully mature, a large male and an even larger female. If something happens to the female, the male will transform into a female and select the next biggest male in the group as the new partner. Isn't that convenient? Hawkfish are another example of a species that can change gender based on specific conditions. They start off as females and can transition to males, a process known as protogeny. Unlike other sequential hermaphrodites, hawkfish have the ability to switch back and forth between male and female, depending on circumstances within the group. Banana slugs, for example, are simultaneous hermaphrodites, able to use both male and female reproductive organs at the same time. While they can self-fertilize, most banana slugs prefer to mate with another slug. Also, research has shown that some frog species are capable of changing gender, with individuals developing fully functional reproductive organs of the opposite gender. This change, observed in both laboratory and wild studies, may be a natural occurrence in frog populations, rather than solely a response to environmental changes. So now you know. That's it for today. So hey, if you pacified your curiosity, then give the video a like and share it with your friends. Or if you want more, just click on these videos and stay on the bright side.